Hi everyone, Sarah here, one of your clinical prosthetists and manager of technical support and global clinical communications with Freedom Innovations. This webinar replay is about hydraulic ankles, how they can benefit your patients, and our two offerings in that space, the Control and the Kintera. At the end of this replay, you will see a link to go to a CEU quiz, and you must pass with 80% or more to get your CEUs. We will submit to ABC on your behalf, and for BOC and state licensure, we will email you a completion certificate that you can then submit to the board. For more free online CEUs that are available whenever you are, you can visit our website, freedom-innovations.com forward slash PNODA, and sign up there. There's a variety of courses that you can take that are available whenever you are. Thank you again for your interest in our webinar. Uh, my name is Haley. I am uh, going to be your presenter today. But to start us off, I want to introduce you guys to Jeremy Matthews and uh, allow him to open us up here. Thanks, Haley. Um, hey, my name is uh, Jeremy Matthews. I'm the Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Freedom. Um, and it's our pleasure to be able to host you today. Um, we really have uh, started out this series really just thinking about how we can engage with our practitioners uh, during these challenging times. And so we really just wanted to, to, to provide a way for you to, a fun way uh, for you to come in, see, have a CEU, uh, get a free CEU, and also uh, learn about freedom uh, while we're kind of finding our way through this new uh, world that we're in. So we definitely uh, appreciate you guys taking the time to come in and spend with us. Um, the great thing about this series, uh, there's at least uh, two more that we know we're going to have for CEUs. Uh, next week will be the plie, and the following week will be the IQ. Um, we really are excited about this, and um, again, heck, glad to have you with us. Uh, Haley's going to tell you a little bit more about our Fit Online uh, and how you can get more CEUs that way also. Uh, the one thing I really want to tell you about is freedom. We are still supporting our practitioners every day, okay? We're still shipping daily from our, our manufacturing plant in Gunnison, Utah. All of our feet, knees, and ankles, foot shells, everything. The whole Irvine team is working remotely. So um, all of our operational functions, so customer service, accounting, uh, product uh, support, all of those are still going 100%. Nothing is slowed down. We're still here to take care of our uh, customers. And our sales team is still definitely ready to support you guys. Um, you know, we've given them the ability to, to really take care of you remotely, whether it's through a, um, a Skype and setting or a, um, uh, just any way they can interact with you online. Um, they also can come see you, but it's at your um, beck and call. Uh, when you guys need them, they'll be there for you. Uh, they're not just gonna make cold calls um, right now during this time. But if you do need somebody for emergency fitting, our, um, our reps are ready to help you and support you at a moment's notice. So again, thank you guys so much for getting online. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Haley. All righty guys. So um, we're gonna get started today. Today is gonna be focused uh, on the hydraulic ankle family that Freedom has, uh, specifically the mechanical ankles. So Contera Control, um, we discussed Connects last week with Matthew, that is an additional hydraulic ankle, uh, but these are not gonna have the microprocessor control on them. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, a few housekeeping notes as we get started here. So um, Number one, um, you should all be muted, so uh, please don't stress on this one, but um, please mute your lines to prevent background noise uh, in the event that you manage to unmute yourself. Uh, but we'll also kind of take a, a peek at that on our end and make sure that that's working well. Uh, also, technical issues, ensure your speakers are on. Uh, most technical issues can be taken care of by restarting your computer. So if you have issues, um, consider that. Sometimes also just closing the application and coming back into it will help as well. Uh, there is a questions feature there on the right side of your screen. Throughout the presentation, if you have questions, go ahead, click on that. Kind of looks like a little speech bubble. Um, you can type your questions in. Sarah's going to help us moderate those today. Um, we're going to hold most of them till the end, uh, so don't panic if you don't hear it immediately, but uh, we will try and get as many of those addressed as we can. 
And then finally, CEUs. Uh, for this course, we will be submitting for the ABC um, credits for you. If you are a VOC practitioner or if you need state licensure, um, or we have a fair number of international um, people joining us today, so thank you for that. Anyone who is not ABC certified, we're gonna be sending a certificate to you. Um, it's gonna be sent to the email that you registered with. As Jeremy also referenced, we have the Fit Online courses available as well. Those are fully online, uh, don't have to log in to one of these at a set time or anything like that. Um, additional information for those uh, has been coming to you in your email and is also on all of our social media channels. So feel free to check those out at any time. All right, we'll get started then. So we're gonna start off today, we're gonna talk about um, what are the true benefits of having um, a hydraulic ankle for a patient? Particularly um, looking hey, Haley, at- Hey Haley, one second. Oh. We just see your camera, we don't see your slides. Oh no, okay. Let me back this up then. Show screen, all right. Thank you, Sarah. This is why we have a second person on with us. <laughs> all right, so again, here is everything okay. I just spoke about. So thank you much. All right. Um, all right, I'll give you a second to read that. We're good, let's go then. Okay, so we're gonna provide, like I said, that biomechanics overview. What is the advantage to having an ankle on a patient? What are they getting out of it? We'll also look at some of the key things uh, regarding control and Conterra, our K2 and K3 hydraulic ankles. And then we'll look at um, what, what they should be used for, who they're for, who they're not for, um, and how you can apply that in your day-to-day -day practice. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna do some fun things today. Um, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple polls. Uh, as we travel around, one of the things we commonly get from people is, so what's going on in the field? What are other people doing? That sort of thing. So this is going to give you guys a chance to see what other people are doing. Um, just do a little interactive thing here, if you will. So we're going to start off, um, like I said, this is going to be a live polling feature. And let's see here. So just in um, 2020, or I'm sorry, 2019, so last year, um, how many mechanical ankles do you estimate that you fit? Your screen is live. You can click on the button of your choice and it will start to kind of populate here. Uh, like I said, at the end, we're going to show you guys kind of what everyone else's answers were, see uh, where you compare, where you don't, all that kind of stuff. And we'll go from there. Uh, so your answers on this one are gonna be, um, I fit no ankles last year. Basically I fit a handful, you know, zero to five. I fit some kind of that five to 10 range, or you know, almost every single patient that I saw got an ankle. Um, I'm gonna give this just another second here. looks like we do saw some answers coming in. Um, just so you guys know, for your own knowledge, about 70% of you guys participated in this. So when you see the numbers, keep that in mind. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna close that out and we're gonna share, what, share the results with you. So it looks like most of you guys are here to really learn about um, ankles in general. Um, by and large, most of you are not fitting them, um, you know, across the board sort of thing. Got a certain percentage that looks like they're doing, um, almost everybody is receiving one, but uh, looks like there's some, some uh, educational room. That's what we're here for. So, all right, I'm gonna close that down. So you should be going back to seeing um, my screen at this point. Sarah, are we good on that? Uh oh, we lost. Yep, you're good. Okay, we're good. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Let's get into the actual discussion here. So the challenge with feet in the past, modular feet, you know, those energy returning fixed ankle feet, they're great on level ground performances. Uh, but unfortunately, they don't always do the best on uneven terrains, slopes, all those sorts of things. Historically, hydraulic ankle systems have adapted better to those scenarios, but they don't always have the best energy return. So what Freedom's trying to do for you guys is to marry these two concepts, to have that energy returning foot with a great ankle that helps to adapt. We know that this is important. You guys have seen this in your practice over and over again. Um, improper gait leading to secondary conditions. The number one at the top of that list there is going to be pain, joint pain, limb pain, back pain, all of those things. Um, and then there's also, you know, that joint degeneration, uh, osteoarthritis risk, and then also increased risk of falls as well. 
So by trying to help keep patients a little bit healthier, um, we can definitely help to improve their long-term outcomes. And this can be a fairly simple way to do that. A couple of common gait deviations can also be taken care of uh, pretty easily by using an ankle. Uh, for example, an asymmetrical gait. Uh, because the ankle allows for a little bit more dorsiflexion as that shank rotates forward, that sound limb gets to spend some more time on the ground. Because of that, you can also take a longer step, which helps to even out that unequal stride length. We'll talk about that more in depth as we get into some of these other slides. Also, if you have somebody who has that really slow or timid gait, an ankle can very much help them as well. Um, timid gait tends to lead to those shorter steps, slower speeds. Uh, so by giving them an option that will allow them to have good range of motion can really help to ensure that they're safe in those slower speeds. Again, we'll talk about that as well. One of the things that we really want to discuss today with you guys, though, is the why behind all of this. So why are we looking at fitting hydraulic ankles? Uh, that really comes down to a lot of the biomechanics here. So some of the gait improvements that you'll see with hydraulic ankles are improved gait symmetry. Increased speed, again, that can be due to that increased step length. Increased toe clearance uh, frequently leads to a decreased stumbling um, effect, therefore fewer falls. And then also um, reducing that distal tibial pain inside the socket. Uh, these particular four here, uh, we're gonna talk about transtibial first. We will get to transfemoral um, advantages as well. Uh, but these will result, um, or I'm sorry, these results will transfer over to those patients as well. So keep that in mind as we're uh, moving through this. So increased step length, what does that actually mean? What does that look like? So as you can see here, I'm gonna use the mouse and kind of draw for you guys a little bit, this terminal stance dorsiflexion. So as the um, entire prosthesis is able to rotate forward into that dorsiflex position, you'll see you can get more of a step length here um, in between, simply based on the positioning of the prosthesis. This will help to, again, increase that gait speed. If you can fall into that um, more patterned step, it's gonna allow you to then find a more um, natural cadence. This will also help to reduce in trips and falls. Um, reason for that is that if you're able to now um, take that longer step, clear certain obstacles, those sorts of things, you're not as much of a, a risk for catching that toe, potentially running into something, those sorts of things. We also have uh, swing phase toe clearance. So whenever the toe is able to actively lift and increase that clearance, that's going to give you a lot more um, confidence in the fact that you're not going to stumble as much. Within uh, both Conterra and Control, we'll talk about the features of each, but we have what we refer to as an active dorsiflexion feature. So no matter what position the foot starts in, it wants to lift into that dorsiflexed position while you walk. Uh, like I said, less likely to stub your toe, and this is really going to come into play during those short steps or anytime you're moving from a position of plantar flexion. Um, so, for instance, if you can't get all the way into a dorsiflex position before you take um, that swing phase, uh, you may not reach the full range of dorsiflexion on an ankle. Uh, but if you can have one that will actively lift the toes for you, will help with those really short steps. Uh, improved comfort while sitting. This is a big one. Um, this tends to be something that really applies um, not specifically for your K2s, but that's where they will see it um, most, uh, just because they tend to be a little bit more sedentary. Uh, but sitting is a big thing. Um, whenever you're sitting and you have that fixed ankle product, it frequently wants to try and rest on the heel and rotate on the knee, um, simply because you're trying to not have it at that fixed 90 degrees. It tends to be a little bit uncomfortable um, back there in that uh, popliteal area. So, but the problem with that is that it will then try and pivot there on that tibia. So you get a little bit of discomfort there, um, especially for long periods of time. So if we can reduce that pain here um, by letting the foot drop down and transferring those forces, we'll also then, like I said, reduce that popliteal pressure as well. This can be especially important when somebody is sitting for long periods of time. So if you're in a car, airplane, um, movie theater, anything like that where you don't have an expansive amount um, to really let that foot relax. Um, this can really help for your comfort level there. 
able to push that forward or push that foot forward just a little bit um, and sit in a little bit more of a natural position. Uh, we also see that there's a lot of improvement for people um, on their uneven terrain uh, type scenarios and then also when they encounter obstacles. Uh, you guys have seen this, you know, patients who have picked up every throw rug in their house sort of thing. They're concerned about what happens when they step on something. Um, so one of the advantages with an ankle is that as opposed to that foot controlling um, the knee and the rest of the limb, that foot's able to reach foot flat very quickly so that the patient is more in control of the prosthesis. The other thing that happens here is again, we're gonna see that residual limb, a um, little less angry, a little less fired up at the end of the day, because those forces that are going up through the limb are now being absorbed at the ankle level. And then last but not least here for you, we also have improved comfort and control while descending ramps. Um, ramps are a big thing for patients. They wanna feel in control when they're on that uh, feeling of you know, a nice gradual natural fall sort of thing. So what you see in this scenario is that because the ankle is able to come down and meet the terrain, you eliminate some of that knee jackknifing. So where that knee wants to push forward because the foot is trying to meet the, meet the terrain. Uh, this will also make a big uh, difference in the way that the opposite limb is compensating. Um, this allows for a more smooth controlled descent. So that opposite limb isn't trying to just get down there really fast. You know, it's not, uh, I gotta get down uh, because the other foot is going to go flat. This will also help to reduce those distal pressures like we've talked about, those same two areas. And then again, that uh, contralateral limb is not having to work as hard. So there's not as much impact on it because you have that nice smooth controlled descent. That works all together to give you a nice improved gait symmetry. So what we're looking at here is whenever we're walking down, that everything looks nice and symmetrical and both limbs are doing the same amount of work. All right, so that's transtibial. Like I said, we're gonna talk about transfemoral too. Um, this is not one of your polls, so don't worry about trying to answer this question, um, but just something to kind of think through what you think the top selling Freedom Innovations foot is with our microprocessor knee, PLEA3. Um, so hopefully you've kind of narrowed it down to two at least, Control and Contera, since that's what the uh, presentation is about. Uh, but the answer here is gonna be Contera. Um, Control is a K2 product. Please do not try and build a K2 foot with a K3 knee. Um, it's gonna just you know mess things up and not be a lot of fun. Uh, but we refer to this as um, the combination here as the ideal combo. So why would this be? What are we looking at additionally that really helps um, stabilize the knee and make everything nice and fluid? So there are some additional benefits for those transfemoral users. That foot is gonna reach a nice foot flat very quickly. And then from there, that's gonna give us some increased knee stability as well. Nice knee extension moment as the foot plantar flexes. That's also going to give us a um, improved user experience. That confidence can build and really let people um, trust the prosthesis a little bit more. We'll talk about these more in detail. But first, let's flip over and take a quick look at that. Um, for those of you who joined us last week, you guys might remember um, I don't have control over the video volume. So just be prepared. This may be a little loud or a little soft on your end, depending on where things are. So just keep that in mind. All right, so our video here is what does the ideal combo look like? And that's what we're gonna um, play for you here in just a second. And here we go.
All right, so again, that was the ideal combo. That is the um, Play A3 microprocessor knee with a Kintera. Um, so you should be back to seeing my screen now at this point. Um, and we will continue on with talking about some of those additional uh, benefits for um, transfemoral users. So as I mentioned before, we have that improved knee stability. What that's going to do by giving that plantar flexion moment at the ankle, like I mentioned, gives a nice knee extension moment um, at the knee, that's going to require the residual limb to not have to necessarily work as hard. So that musculature is not going to fatigue as easily, and you're not going to have that um, feeling of really just being tired and worn out at the end of the day. This is especially important for people who don't have a lot of voluntary control um, or who have a very real, uh, short residual limb. Both of those types of populations will find that they can really benefit from an ankle. There's also that reduced mental effort. If I'm not having to think about what am I stepping on every single step, I can certainly do a lot more engagement with the world rather than you know, just simply focused on my step. That helps build that user confidence we keep talking about. Um, somebody who trusts their prosthesis uses their prosthesis. Uh, if you have those patients who it ends up in the closet, it's not the outcome that we're looking for by any means. We definitely want to get people up and about and, um, you know, just in general working on their rehab and everything. So by giving them something that's going to help improve their stability and improve their confidence can help you have better long-term outcomes as well. Um, so specific to transfemorals on those ramps that we were talking about, um, you'll see that these look very, very similar to the benefits for the transtibial patients. Again, reduces that jackknifing. Uh, here, that's gonna be even more important because your prosthetic knee, your musculature is not there to help control it as well. Uh, we also have that more, much more smooth and controlled descent. Um, as you guys saw in the video, um, he was certainly able to walk those ramps hold those ramps and just be comfortable on everything. Again, reduce impact on that sound limb. If you're not having to slam it down into the ground every single time trying to beat the other foot, you're definitely gonna have uh, the ability to you know, save those joints and uh, not wor worry as much about uh, what's going on there. And then again, that improves symmetry. So the ability to really have a nice even walk no matter what terrain you're on. Also, we're talking about terrain, that uneven terrain and obstacles um, specific to those trans uh, femoral patients. Uh, you'll see here that the foot, like I said, when it wants to plantar flex and come down, that's going to give a lot more knee stability here as well. Um, whenever they have those, those obstacles that they're not prepared for, anytime the foot can conform, it's going to give a lot more uh, confidence as well, like we spoke about earlier. What that translates to is reduced concentration. If I'm not looking down for every single step I take and I'm looking up more, I'm much more engaged in the world. Um, I am not just looking at what's on the ground and watching my prosthesis. That's gonna lead to better gait in general, but it's also gonna lead to somebody who is much more focused on what's happening around them and engaged with other people as well. All right, so in summary, what we're really looking at is the fact that ankles can help give us a little bit closer biological norm. Again, whenever we have that more symmetrical gait, um, we're saving that contralateral limb, all of those things, it's gonna help for long-term outcomes. Um, also, if we can increase the stability, we increase mobility, we increase confidence, and again, looking at more of those outcomes and how we can get people up and moving a little bit more. So we will transition from that as far as kind of the why ankles and to the what ankles part here. So we're gonna look specifically at um, the two, uh, like I mentioned in the Freedom Portfolio, the mechanical ankles, the control, it's gonna be our K2, and the Kintera is gonna be our K3 product. Before we get too deep into that, we're gonna take another one of those polls though. Uh, this is the last one, I promise. <laughs> but again, just to kind of let you guys uh, See, see what else is going on out there in the world. Um, so this one, I'm gonna go ahead and launch it for you. This one is um, specifically asking, who do you use ankles on? Um, are you using them on K2 patients, K3 patients, everybody? Um, so we'll kinda, kinda give you guys a minute to answer that one and see. Um, there's a lot of variety here. And again, there's no correct answer, um, you know, there's, the answer your freedom sales rep would love to hear you say, but uh, 
but it's really in how that you practice and all of those sorts of things. So we'll give this one just a minute and see. Um, looks like we have about half of the people who have voted so far. Nice mixture though, I will say. Um, we see a lot of different, lot of different answers here. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, you guys are still rolling them in. So let me let me give it just a second longer. And we'll go. All right, looks like you guys have kind of finished that up. So let me share the answers with you here. So you'll see that most people, it looks like, are using um, ankles on both K2 and K3 amputations and across amputation levels. Um, interestingly enough, it looks like there's a fair number of you guys using them just for your K2 patients, um, which I'm sure relates to many of those uh, comfort benefits that we discussed. And then kind of a smattering up and down from there as well of uh, other things. So let's talk about how the Freedom Portfolio can help you guys um, get back to um, seeing those patients and everything. So a couple of things to note here. Um, the Conterra is the predicate product. That is the one that Freedom has had out the longest. And frankly, it's the reason that we have the control. Uh, there are a lot of things about Kintera that people really like, um, and they they made the request very, very frequently for us to have that in a K2 product. So when we talk about um, these different uh, features and different things, note that these do share a lot of, um, a lot of the different technological uh, aspects. So because of that, it's going to sound a little bit similar, but there's also some differences in these products as well. But we'll start off talking about what's the same. Um, so your very first shared design element here is going to be the motion. Um, so the Control and Contera both will have 12 degrees of motion. Uh, they're going to have 10 degrees of plantar flexion, 2 degrees of dorsiflexion. They also have what we refer to as a progressive ankle stop. So what that means is that as the hydraulics start to come to the end, it's going to start to slow and you're going to start to load that foot keel before you ever finish the end of the hydraulics. So that way it's not just hydraulics keel. There's not a bump in the middle as you transition from one to the other. So that really helps to give a very nice smooth gait and it also just generally feels good to people. There's also a temperature compensator in there as well. Um, what that means is that means that you guys in your Minnesota winters and you guys in your Arizona summers, the ankle should feel the same to the patient in acro across all environments. Um, now, it may take a step or two for everything to kind of even out. You know, in the winter, that first step may feel just a little stiff. Uh, height of the summer, it might feel just a little bit looser than they're expecting, but within one or two steps, boom, it's gonna be right there with that same sensation that they're used to having. Additionally, we also have, um, as I've mentioned a couple times, this dorsiflexion assist spring. So what this is, is this is an actual design so that those toes will lift up during swing phase. Um, again, that really is designed to help to prevent stumbles, prevent falls, and really give a nice active dorsiflexion so that your patient trusts where that is, even if they didn't take a full length step and pre-position it into a, a dorsiflexion um, angle. We also have uh, what we refer to as the smart controls. Uh, this is very popular um, among the uh, clinicians that are out there. All of your controls are up above the foot shelf. They are a four millimeter Allen wrench. And then there's also independent control for plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So if your patient needs more resistance on one side and less resistance on the other, you can make that happen. Um, with that, it's you know very easy to fine tune. We've made these where it's uh, dots here, as you can see, uh, as opposed to numbers that don't mean a whole lot. So really, really kind of helps there. All right, so talking now about the specifics for each product, we'll start with control. Um, control is designed, like I said, off of the Conterra platform. Uh, so all of those things we just talked about, those are all in this product. It's going to be a 5972-5968, so that flexible keel foot with that multi-axial swing phase active dorsiflexion ankle. Couple things that are unique to control. First off, we have that full length keel in a fiberglass composite. 
It's gonna give you a little bit of flexibility there to this so that when you have that nice smooth rollover, it's gonna give you um, a little bit of a little bit of pop to your uh, walk, but it is in no way, shape, or form um, an energy return foot. So keep that in mind. This does come in a sandal toe option as well. Um, our sandal toe options do only go up to size 28, so keep that in mind, but it does come in all three foot shell colors. Um, so you do have all of those options for your patients. When it says no bolts, what that is referring to is that it's talking about the way that the toe is designed so that pieces are not bolted together to give you that dead spot during, uh, during rollover. So no, uh, no voltage there up front. You do have a two year warranty on this product as well. And that keel there comes in four categories. Uh, this does have a 300 pound weight limit on it. So it will go all the way up um, to some of your more, uh, more robust patients. In addition to that keel being categorized, the heel itself is also categorized. We accomplish this with a heel bumper. The nice thing is that these bumpers are interchangeable so that you can customize the feel of the foot and of the um, heel for the patient's needs. Like I said, there's four categories of them, but whatever category you order will already come in the foot shell, and then you'll get the others as well. So let's say you order a category three foot. The keel is gonna come categorized and that you know red bumper is gonna be there in the bottom of the heel. If you notice as your patient's walking though, they're just crushing that heel, you can turn it over. It's literally just thump on your hand and it falls out. Please don't try and pry it out or anything like that. Just thump and you're good to go. Um, you can change that out to the four or maybe your patient is kind of bumping off of it or it's rotating and you feel like the heel's a little stiff, change it out to that category too. You're gonna get the full kit every time. So you're gonna have the freedom to do whatever it is that you need to do with that. All right, so that's the what. So now who? Who do we really think about with K2 ankles? Again, it's gonna be across the K2 spectrum. Uh, this is gonna be somebody who is out doing simple community barriers. So stepping over a curb to go into the grocery store, walking across the soccer field to watch uh, their grandchild play, um, in and out of medical office buildings on those ramps and things of that nature. We spoke a couple times about um, the slow walkers and the increased toe clearance there to help keep them safe. Um, also patients who need safety and comfort while sitting. Uh, we'll talk about that safety aspect um, here in a slide or two, but we've you know, discussed the comfort there. Your K2 patients as a general rule of thumb tend to be a little bit more sedentary. This really plays in for them. And then those transfemoral applications who need that extra knee stability. Um, that can also be true of patients who have just laxity around the knee as well and you need to provide a little bit more stability there so that knee doesn't have to work as hard too. So when we talk about K2 ankles and why to use them on patients, it really comes down to, distills down to two things really, biomechanics and safety. Transitioning from seated to standing is a very dangerous ADL whenever you really think about it. You're talking about somebody changing the full angle of their body, changing their speed, fighting gravity, all of those things. Whenever you can pull your feet back up under you and stand up over them, as opposed to trying to balance on that one fixed ankle, it really makes it a lot easier to stand and a lot safer to stand as well. The other thing to consider is that um, the elderly, whatever that term may mean to you, um, the elderly do tend to demonstrate slower walking speeds just in general. As we age, our body slows down. As we've talked about, like I said several times, you're going to hear me say it at least once more, hydraulics do great at slower speeds. They very much replicate the functionality of um, the, the anatomical an ankle whenever they have the ability to provide that motion um, in a slow atmosphere. The other thing that happens as we age is that we just have less power generation at the ankle. Um, so, you know, less push off, less ability to lift the toes, all of those things. Again, hydraulic ankles help, uh, help in that safety aspect there. When you're in swing phase, it increases that toe clearance, nice and continue to move on, nice and secure in the step. All right, so the other thing we wanna to touch on here with you guys, cause it is, you know, as always, everyone's concerned when we talk about these things, what does the reimbursement picture look like for ankles? So let's do a little bit of a comparison here for you. 
So we're going to take the walk tech. The walk tech is your pretty average K2 foot, um, also offered through Freedom. It's going to be a 5972, 5986 foot. You can see your average Medicare reimbursements there. Um, then we have control. Um, control again will be that 5972, 5968 this time. In addition to all those biomechanical advantages, all the reasoning that your patient was going to benefit from that, yes, you will make some more money on it. Um, so just like I said, something to keep in mind because the question does come up. All right, so that is K2 patients. K3, we'll get into with Kintera. Um, Kintera is, gonna, like I said, going to be very, very similar in how it works, how the ankle functions, all of those things. So we'll talk mostly uh, about the actual foot itself. Uh, that foot makes it a 5981. Uh, that's going to be 5981, 5968 ankle here. So a couple things to note here with this. Um, we've talked about most of these things, but just as a general picture, you'll notice you get a full length uh, keel here and then also this full length heel. Um, this unbolted heel, again, refers to the fact that these two pieces are not held together with a bolt up front that creates a dead spot during rollover. You'll also get this split keel here. Um, while it's not gonna provide true high levels of inversion, eversion, it will help with ground compliance as well. So what that carbon fiber keel looks like um, is it, it will provide energy return for your daily needs. When we did all of our Kintera rollout and everything, or I'm sorry, our, um, our control rollout, we did put it on a couple K3 patients just to get their feedback. Um, and the big thing they noticed is that they do miss the energy return after a couple days. Um, so like I said, very different patient populations. And one thing to keep in mind is that that more active patient will benefit from uh, this foot plate as well. In addition uh, to, con to the control, this one will also come in that sandal toe shape right there. Three year warranty on this one. Uh, that foot plate comes in seven categories. However, please note it does go up to 275 pounds. Um, as patients increase their activity level, they tend to put a little bit more stress, a little bit more strain on the ankle. Um, so because of that, um, slightly more limited in the uh, weight spectrum here. Uh, but with that, one of the things that we wanna talk with you guys about is what we internally refer to as legacy engineering projects. Um, basically what those are is those are ongoing enhancements to products. Uh, even if there's a product issue that is not an issue, even if it's just something that we see um, that we can fix in our own internal um, processes and things of that nature. Uh, back in, I believe 2017, uh, Kintera went through these enhancements. There for a while, you may have heard it branded as uh, Kintera 2.0. So we made some changes to help increase you know, the durability, the smoothness of the ankle, those sorts of things. In general, these projects are nothing you will ever actually notice and physically see, uh, but they are there, like I said, to just enhance the product. Um, number five down there, it's process improvements. It's things you're not, not ever going to notice. It's basically we said, hey, if we do this step versus that step first, things run a little smoother inside. Um, so again, those, pro those are out there. Um, if you ever see something branded as, you know, 2.0, 3.0, whatever, that's probably what's happened. It's not that we've made uh, strategic changes to the product or anything like that. We've just kind of increased the quality a little bit for you guys and made it a little little stronger, faster, better, whatever the uh, million dollar man motto is there. All right, so that's, like I said, the what, so now the who. Um, when we talk about K3 users, we're looking at low to moderate impact. The thing to remember here is they can still be very active. They can be high activity users. What we're much more concerned about is that impact level, that thud, thud that they're putting through the ankle, because that's where you'll sometimes get some issues. But people who are frequently outside, you know, if they want to work um, in their yard, if they're doing, um, you know, like I said, uh, they're out on the soccer fields with their kids, you know, weekend coaching, that sort of thing. Those patients uh, definitely do very, very well with an ankle. Golfers love it. It's one of our uh, biggest uh, clientele there. Somebody who's frequently kneeling. Um, we have a guy who's a plumber who uses this and he swears by it because he can get up and down so much easier. The thing is, it's not going to be the back foot. It's not going to have a major plantar flexion while they're uh, balancing, but the front foot where they can now rotate backwards and forwards over it makes a big difference. 
Uh, again, somebody who's looking to reduce those contralateral side forces, you know, maybe they've had a knee replacement on the other side or something like that. Someone using stairs a lot with that um, dorsi assist, it's gonna help them clear the edge of that stair a little better. And then again, like we mentioned, those transdermal applications as well. Uh, when we talked about what does it distill down to for a K3 ankle, we're looking at patient satisfaction and functionality. Um, so to start with, for those of you who are doing socket comfort scores, you've probably seen this in your practice. Um, if you put an ankle on a patient, generally because it will break that early um, mid, or I'm sorry, reduce that breaking in that early mid stance and allow them to rotate over the ankle a little more, makes the socket much more comfortable. People tend to be much more satisfied with their prosthesis. Also, people who are using an ankle tend to walk a little faster. Um, that self-selected walking speed starts to get a little more quick now that the ankle can rotate forwards and they can take those longer steps like we were talking about before. The big reason this is so important is that walking speed is one of the global indicators of rehab success and also a predictor of mortality. So the faster that we can get somebody up and walking and getting them confident in their stride, they tend to have a much better long-term rehab outcome as well. Um, we talk about metabolic cost reductions. That generally comes down to the fact that the contralateral side is doing much less work than it typically would without um, an ankle on the prosthetic side. And then finally, again, um, like we said before, that increased toe clearance during swing. Um, so keep that in mind. Again, just as a safety aspect there across all populations. Reimbursement summary here. This is, again, just a comparative um, little assessment here for you. So looking at Sierra, it's a very comparable foot that someone would put on um, a patient who would probably be getting an ankle. It's gonna be a 59.81, 59.86. When we look at that in comparison to Kintera, um, 59.81 versus 59.68, you can see there your reimbursement difference in addition to, like I said, all those other advantages that you're giving to the patient as well. All right, so like I said, we do have all of those shared technologies between these two products. So just to recap those, um, you're gonna have that independent um, adjustable plantar flexion and dorsiflexion control, four millimeters, uh, four millimeter wrench, I should say. Uh, you're gonna have 12 degrees of motion, 10 degrees plantar flexion, two degrees dorsiflexion. Both will come in a sandal toe, they'll have that progressive ankle stop, and they will have that dorsiflexion um, assist there. The temperature compensator will also come into play no matter what environment they're going to be in. Um, all right, so we're going to kind of wrap up here today with a couple other things to think about. So over, um, I believe it's on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, if you do not have your um, little viewer maxed out, press that orange button and it'll pop back out, but you have some handouts over there. Uh, one of those is this clinical bulletin. So um, our technical department um, has put together this clinical bulletin for you guys, specifically related to reducing the risk of falls and also reducing the fear of falling for someone who's had a lower limb amputation. Uh, one of the big questions that people will say is, yeah, that's great, but how do I know which patient? So down here, you'll notice um, this, how can I tell if my patient is at risk section? It does give you some different outcome measures that you can do there in office and see about, um, excuse me, see about the um, potential outcome that your patient has for falling. This can help you um, not only in your clinical decision making, but also in some of your reimbursement um, paperwork as well. This is fully backed with a list of um, uh, sources and a full bibliography on the back of it as well. This is today's full bibliography. Like I said, it's almost entirely on the back of that um, clinical bulletin that's there in your handouts. If for some reason you can't access it, let us know. We'll make sure to get it to you. And uh, at this point, we wanted to open it up for questions, um, specifically questions related to ankles. But if you have something else about um, you know, freedom or anything like that, we're happy to answer that as well. We're gonna let Sarah moderate for us. Um, so she'll ask some questions and if she wants to answer it, that's fine too. If she passes it to me, we'll uh, we'll go back and forth here. All right, Haley, our first question is going to be, can you discuss the durability differences between fiberglass and carbon fiber? 
and the expected lifespan of the control? Sure. So, um, so that is one of the things that that people always ask is, oh my gosh, it's a two-year warranty. Two-year warranty is more or less standard for K2 products across the industry. That being said, um, we have tested, tested, tested this product, um, both the ankle itself and the keel. Um, I believe we ran it through three or four million cycles. So your average K2 user probably can't put it through what we did. Um, we have sold um, several hundred of these at this point. It released uh, last September. And I do not believe we have had a single return um, based on quality issues or warranty issues or anything of that nature. Um, frankly, we have very, very few returns in general on that product. Um, when we talk about uh, fiberglass versus carbon fiber, uh, fiberglass in general is a little bit more durable um, just based on the properties of the uh, material itself. That being said, this is not going to be the same type of fiberglass layup as you would see in, say, our Maverick line. That one is truly laid up for durability, and this one is laid up for flexibility. So it's going to be a little bit different, um, not going to be the same type of durability that would directly compare with carbon fiber on that side of things. Perfect, thank you. We got um, build height for each foot and I brought those up um, okay. for your Kintera. Your, I was like, we probably don't know that off the top of our head. So <laughs> the Kintera, your build height is gonna be between 120 millimeters to 124 millimeters, depending on the size. And for your control is going to be 110 millimeters to 112 millimeters. Again, depending on which size um, you order. And next is where should you start with the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion? Ah, okay. So um, to a certain extent, there's going to be a little bit of a preference ability there. Um, we do have in the IFUs, the instructions for use, a full grid of how to step-by-step -step fit the product. It does recommend starting with the product fully in um, as much resistance as possible, and then backing off to the point that is comfortable for your patient. Um, I will tell you guys, for me personally, I like to start it smack in the middle, so that if I need to go up, I can, and if I need to go down, I can. That way I have both options for the patient. You're not gonna do it wrong. Um, there, there is not such a drastic, drastic change in um, the hydraulics that you are going to cause your patient to fall and get injured or anything like that. Um, if you have concerns though, definitely go ahead. You can crank up that uh, resistance all the way to full resistance and then back it off as needed. Okay, perfect. Um, what would be the contraindications for ankles for patients? Ah, great one. Um, I typically work that in when I talk about the who is it for, um, but also who is it not for? That's a great one. So we are not looking at patients who um, have a need to do a lot of running, jumping, those sorts of things. Um, again, it really comes back to the impact um, that's gonna go through that ankle. So somebody who wants to um, you know, play basketball or um, maybe even tennis or something along those lines, it's probably not the best option for them. We're looking at something mechanical here. If there's a lot of moving parts, the more force they put through it, um, the more wear and tear that you could potentially have. So those are generally the biggest contraindication. Um, so, but other than that, most of your patients are probably gonna qualify for an ankle. Okay, awesome. So what is the difference between the hydraulics of the um, Kintera 1.0 and the Kintera 2.0? So the hydraulic functionality itself, um, almost nothing has changed. What really has changed there is going to be the actual mechanics of the ankle, some of the bolting, some of the filters, um, those sorts of things. The functionality and the patient experience is very, very much the same. Um, really, like I said, it's going to be more those pieces and parts that have changed. Awesome. And uh, what is the recommended bench alignment? So bench alignment on this is still going to be neutral um, with that pyramid nice and flat. 
The thing is, is that you're only really getting two degrees of dorsiflexion, let's be honest. That's not gonna make a major, major difference in your alignment. So you don't have to wedge it, you don't have to put in um, any holds or anything like that. As long as you keep that pyramid nice and flat, you're gonna be just fine on your bench alignment. We do recommend that you take um, that line from your socket, bisect it, and drop it right down the anterior aspect of the pyramid and use that as your starting alignment. But you don't have to make any other um, adjustments or considerations for the fact that the ankle's going to move once they start walking. Um, do what you need to for your dynamic alignment once they start, but nothing special um, for bench alignment there. Alrighty, how about are the feet waterproof? Ah, so um, because those ankle units themselves are actually bolted onto uh, the, the uh, foot platform, unfortunately, we cannot say that they are true waterproof um, simply because of that bolt. We all know our patients are gonna take them into the water, so use appropriate education there. This should not be used as a shower leg, should not be used to swim in, anything like that. But if you're out and about in you know, the rain puddles or something of that nature that you can come across, it's gonna be okay. Just make sure that they're taking proper care uh, to ensure that things are not you know, long-term rusting out or anything like that. Use it like you would your standard prosthesis. Awesome. How about um, using these products on your bilateral amputees? Bilateral amputees generally do very, very well with this. Um, so ankles tend to give them a lot more movement than they would have had with having those fixed ankle products. So with that, it takes a lot of the pressures off the limbs like we've spoken about. Um, also just gives them the ability to move their feet where they need to to always feel stable. That being said, some people do not do as well with that much movement. Um, so you may need to really crank up uh, the um, plantar flexion resistance there. It can be a little unnerving for somebody who maybe lost that movement years ago to then give them that much back. Um, so some patients, you know, be a little cautious with and, uh, you know, slowly introduce it to them. But as a general rule, bilateral patients do very, very well, um, both K2s and K3s with a, with a hydraulic ankle. And then this one's a little more general. Um, okay. What is the difference in energy storing and return between fiberglass and carbon fiber? Um, so in general, there's not going to be a major difference in how much energy is returned. Um, the energy return is actually almost identical. The difference is in going to be in how the energy is returned. Um, so if you have a one-for-one -one layup, like for instance, if we took, um, if we took, you know, let's talk apples and apples, the Renegade versus the Maverick XT. I know those are not feet we've been talking about today, but they're in the same family. What you will see is that the um, fiberglass is going to have a more of a slow bounce return to it. It will return that energy, but over a slower curve, whereas carbon fiber tends to be more of a quick bounce return. Um, that's why you will generally see things like running feet made from carbon fiber and not fiberglass. Again, um, we're, when we talk about these particular ankles, um, those concepts don't necessarily apply because of it's not a one-for-one -one direct correlation in this particular instance. Um, but when you see more active feet, that's gonna be the answer there. All right, perfect. That looks like all that we've got rolling in for now. Okay. I think you awesome. answered everybody. Awesome. And the other thing too, guys, if you have additional questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us um, on your email that you're going to receive after this. Uh, there is that, um, you know, clickable um, email so that you can reach out to us if, uh, if something else comes up. Um, next week, we are going to be doing PLEA 3 um, with Jeff Kulet. Um, It's going to be, again, Thursday. 2 Eastern, 12, uh, ah, 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific, um, 12 o'clock for me. Sorry, I got confused there. 
Uh, we're going to go through the microprocessor knee, how it works, who it's for, all of those good things. Um, in the meantime, don't forget you do have those two handouts um, specifically talking about ankles. And then also, um, if you have questions or want to um, do a trial with somebody or something like that, please feel free to reach out to, uh, to your local representative. Again, if you're not sure who they are, shoot us an email. We'll be happy to help you out with that. Um, and then um, just so you do know as well, these feet are returnable. So if something happens that you get it and determine it is for the wrong patient, uh, we will take it back for you. Um, there is a window on that. Get with your local rep. Um, it's about 60 days and uh, it still needs to be in good working condition. But please do not let fear of buying the wrong product um, limit you in potentially uh, giving some of these benefits to your patients. But otherwise, thank you guys for joining us. We will see you guys next week. As always, we're here for your needs, um, as Jeremy mentioned, and uh, happy to talk uh, about anything offline as well. But otherwise, see you guys next week. Great job.